On this week's edition of Game Ball Cards Kickoff, we'll be talking about the Big 12 Conference, and as always, we'll have Mike and Luke rank each team from 10 to 1 in the Big 12 Conference. And also, we'll have a very special guest with us. Stick around. You don't want to miss this one. Game Ball Cards Kickoff begins now. Kickoff for the football season never ends. I'm Marcus Young, Jimmy Jingles. I'm Michael Riley. I'm Luke Hartnett. Now, today's podcast, we have a very special guest in the building with us today. Uh, we're very humbled and honored to have Mr. Tom Keegan with us. Uh, for those who uh, are familiar with him, um, he has a background in journalism, absolutely. Let's deserve a round of applause. Uh, he um, wrote for the New York Post, uh, the Baltimore Sun. Um, we also did, um, if I'm not mistaken, he also did ESPN Radio. New right as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, New York before we to the Midwest as well. Yep. So definitely, uh, thank you, thank you for joining us on this podcast. Hey, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. I started out in California after I graduated from Marquette. I uh, worked at the Orange County Register in the 1980s, competing against the Los Angeles Times. Uh, and KU Sports, and he's a sports writer for the Lawrence Journal World. So check him out on that. Absolutely. Um, now. Discussing the Big 12, of course, uh, this conference doesn't have divisions like the previous uh, co- um, conference that we talked about. Uh, so we're just going to rank these teams from 10 um, down to number one. Uh, we're going to start with the University of Kansas. The Jayhawks last season uh, finished with a record of 1-11. Uh, Mike and Luke, you both have them finishing um, last with the uh, intent. Um, Luke, I'm actually going to start with you this time. Um, obviously, that would be the clear-cut um, decision with uh, their finish. Uh, expect them to basically finish out the same way. Uh, sadly, I do. I mean, I just I don't I don't think that they really have the size on a, either the offensive or defensive lines. They don't really have the depth either um, to really compete with the other Big Twelve schools, or at least to beat the other Big Twelve schools. Um, they they open up with Nichols, uh, an FCS opponent, I believe, uh, week one. I think they get a win there. Um, and then and then they try to end the forty some odd game losing streak on the road at Central Michigan week two. Um, they win that game, you know, maybe maybe they can get, you know, a three, four win season. They lose that game, they're probably looking at a three win season pops, maybe just two, maybe just one. But I mean, just, uh, I mean, they, it's, you know, the proof is at the pudding. You just, uh, they don't really have much of a track record to us. You just don't do any better than they have, you know, during the uh, previous uh, David Beatty coach years. Mike, I would imagine you were basically second of what we were discussing. I agree with them a little bit. In my opinion, they're only going to win their first game, and it's a wrap from there. I hate to say it, being a diehard KU fan, but I'm going to keep it real. It's another disaster season. We'll have to be prepared for it. I'm just being brutally honest. I mean, I have some hope, but I lost all hope and faith. I'm sorry. I'm just going to flat out and say it. And to me, KU football is a joke. And it's been a joke for the last nine to ten years, and it's basically a clown show. You go to like a circus, dun 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 dun. dun, dun. I mean, if you can keep your head coaching job going at three and thirty-three in three years, where do I need to sign up at so I can go out there and apply for a coach? I'm just asking, where should I go at? You can apply. You do a better job. He can. Apply. I don't think it's done been done before. I don't think that a coach has been retained within three and thirty three. Right? No, most coach get can so after that. Power five level, I would think. I no. don't think. But they recently did it uh, back in May. Fired the athletic director, which was the plus. Thank goodness. Then, uh, so now the head coach is even on the hotter seat. That season is flaming me on burning hot right now. So, I think well, are, are they still paying Charlie Weiss and uh, Turner no, Gill? No, no, they're, 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 they're Turner done. Gill was paid off in ninety days. Okay, okay yeah, okay. the entire six million it was in his contract, and that's what he had left six million. 
in his contract. The rest of the contract had to be paid off in 90 days, so that was very a coach, very much a coach favorable contract. And Charlie was just uh, uh, paid through his five years. The FYI, his Liberty team beat Baylor last year. Just yes, fun Baylor came information. in here and beat Kansas <laughs> State he tonight. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my intake. That's my opinion, and my uh, B's not gonna be around to after the last week of September, maybe first week of October. So I'm just going to stick to my gun, stick to my scoop, and that's what I'm gonna call it. That's how I'm. Um, I want to ask you this: because you mm-hmm. obviously cover uh, yep. Kansas sports? So what do you see about the season for the Jayhawks? Uh, well, I think they're going to be better than they were, but you're talking about a team that lost by an average of 32 points a game in the Big 12. So if you're better and you lose by an average of 18 points a game, that doesn't mean you win a Big 12 game. Uh, and and th- here's why I think they're going to be better. Uh, normally, you would recruit for the future in football, and you build a program. That's not the way David Beatty approached this last offseason. Uh, he really was all in on, let's get the guys who can make us the best in 2018 so I can save my job. Well, by doing that, they they recruited a bunch of junior college players, primarily on the defense. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those guys are going to add to the depth on the defense. Some of them will probably start. And so I do think the defense will be better. There's so many injuries in football. You need two strings of good players, and they haven't had that. Now it seems like they have two strings of at least decent players, so I think their defense is going to be better. Um, then the key question, of course, co- comes back to, do They're they have the offensive line? Before you even talk quarterback, do they have an offensive line? And they have a new offensive line coach who's more into physical offensive line play, but do they have depth at offensive line? It appears the answer is no and that they don't have uh, the type of offensive line that you need to protect the quarterback long enough to run the area at all. Now, I got a question for you. Who's going to be facing a bigger uphill challenge? Uh, the uh, the next Kansas football coach or Bill Snyder in 1989? Wait, which one do you think would have the bigger challenge? I'll, right. say, I'll say Bill Snyder in 89. Because K-State the 80s and 70s and 60s were well, 40s. were really bad, so. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. It's probably comparable. Uh, you know, the thing about Bill Snyder – um, Gary Bender, the famous broadcaster who's now retired and living in Phoenix, is a good friend of mine, just a great guy. And Gary was covering an Iowa football game when Bill Snyder was the offensive coordinator. And Dick Vermeil, the old Chiefs and Rams coach in UCLA. Philadelphia Eagles. In Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Can't forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, he was covering it with them. So the day before, they, uh, I guess it's Friday or Thursday night, I think it's Friday, they get uh, the, one of the coordinators for the two broadcasters. They get to spend an hour from a coordinate, with a coordinator from each team. Well, they had Bill Snyder that week. And after talking with him for an hour, Vermeil's walking out of the room, his hotel room, they leave the room, Snyder stays in there, and Vermeil looks at Gary Bender and said, we have just listened to the greatest offensive mind I have ever heard talk football for an hour. So, you know, Dick Vermeil would have been a good guy to hire as, a, as a, an athletic director because he saw what K-State saw when they hired him, and that's why Bill Snyder, it starts with him having an incredible offensive line. Obviously, he's a very disciplined guy, a very uh, focused on his work guy, and he's just done an amazing, amazing job there. Right now, in this situation where Kansas is in, when they make a coaching change, I would think that you'd want to probably get a guy with a head coaching experience just because of where the program is right now. Exactly. You never want to shrink your pool, so if you're convinced the next Bill Snyder is out there, you go get him. But I don't know. I think it, it, the circumstances kind of dictate they should get a head coach. I couldn't agree because when you have head coaching experience, especially on a winning level like other head coaches and maybe former head coaches, it shows to where they put in the work and their detail or attendance uh, or discipline sound offensively and de- uh, defensively, and they play assignment football. Also, nothing is going to be new to them. Like assembling a staff 
for the first time is new to a, a first time head coach. And what they tend to do is hire their buddies. Well, if I'm your buddy and we've been drinking buddies and whatever, and all of a sudden I hire you to work for me, that dynamic changes. Right. Absolutely. And and I'm hiring him. We've been buddies too, and that dynamic changes because you think I'm favoring him because I don't know him as well as you, I know you, and he thinks I'm favoring you because we're buddies. And the whole thing is like, who does what? No, when you hire a new head coach, he knows exactly who does what, and you hit the ground running. On you with that. Um, that was right on that's hands down. Right. True statement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We'll definitely see what happens with the Jayhawks moving forward. Definitely hope that they finish with something higher than a 1 and 11 record going into Not happening. I- I'm guessing 2 and 10, but you know, you can look at, I'm going to say you can look at four games on that schedule and say they could win any of those four, which means they could win two games. And those four games are the first three in Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State I throw in there just because no more Mason Rudolph, no more James right. Washington, a quarterback in transition. I mean, they have a what is their quarterback situation. You know, you're not really sure. Uh, but do I think if I had to guess right now who wins the Oklahoma State, Kansas State, obviously I'm going to say Oklahoma State. But I'm just saying those four games are in play. So if you win half of them and the other three being – the three non-con games, you know, Nichols State, Central Michigan, and Rutgers. And here's a little tidbit about Nichols State. Coach's name is Tim Rebo, I believe. It's R-E-B-O-W-E. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I think it's Rebo. I'm going to interview him this summer. He was hired two weeks before David Bay. Nichols State, he took over a program at Nichols State that was coming off an 0 and 11 season. Yes, yes, love yeah, yeah. Own eleven at the FCS level. His first year he went three and eight. That's progress. Mm-hmm. His second year he went five and six. That is progress. Mm-hmm. His third year he went eight and four. Now are they playing the same teams that can't stop? Of course not. But they are playing the same teams that they used to be losing to, and now they're beating. That's progress. That is a true factor, and I don't see that for Kansas University. I'm. I hate to ruin the moment, but I'm going to stick to the fire. It's going to be a one-win season, and that's my honest opinion, and I'm going to stick to it. So you think his winning percentage will stay the same if he gets to coach the whole season? Mm-hmm. 1-11? Yep. I say uh, he's going to be gone before that. Yeah, I have no idea what that is because we we don't know how Jeff Long views an in-season and interim thing. And what do you really gain in an interim I don't know. You, you know, does it get you on the road to a next coach quicker? Not really. I mean, well, we had I guess him the Cape of Arkansas. He, uh, you know, the last game of the season for Arkansas, they lost the only to Missouri, and he, uh, he, he let Bielema finish the season out. But I, th- I think Bielema was let go less than an hour after the Missouri game. Right, and actually, he did let him coach the last game and finish the season. Well, actually, though, Long was let go a couple weeks before Bielema. He was let go November. Yeah, I was unaware of that. I was yeah, unaware yeah, of that. Yeah, I, I do remember that. Yeah. So, yeah, we really don't know how he operates on that and what he thinks about that. That'll be an interesting thing. That's the most commonly asked question, though. When I'm going, on, how long will Beatty be the coach? When are they going to make the change? You would think with three quarterbacks competing that that would be the question, but it's not. People are tuned out. They're so tuned out. All right, KU fans, let's see what happens. This could be a long one, but. You never That's know. why they play the games. You never know. It, That's right, Marcus. Absolutely. That's why they play the games. And moving on from Kansas, um, and, and kind of speaking of returning to the glory mm-hmm. days back when KU was winning, this is another program that seems like they've kind of fallen from grace recently as well, and that is the Baylor Bears, who finished with a similar record of 1-11 and um, last season. Uh, Mike, I want to start with you. Um, you have them finished the ninth uh, in the conference. Um, why did you actually have them a little bit higher than KU? Well, with that – incident that happened at Baylor two or three years ago, I just don't think they could recover back. And I'm just saying that just being a true honest because when you have so much success and more recruits and all of a sudden you hit with all the allegations that have been going on down there, it's going to tank whatever success you had to the ground. And it's going to be hard to get over that. And you might think wins, might get over it. Penn State, they got over that because this is a big name school. They got a little bit over that. Some people are still affected by it, which they should be. But 
in a similar case of Baylor, it's a different story because you got one of the big school names down there, and when you hit like that, it comes when your reputation gets hit. That goes from everybody from the highest up to the coaching athletics, where wherever you want to rank it at. So, my opinion is going to take them a long time to get over it. The coaches try to lead them in the right direction, but that allegation that's going on, that's good, still going to be tainted. It's always still going to be there, and athletes want to go there because of that? I don't know. Only time will tell. No, it's actually kind of a bad look at Temple football in a weird kind of way, because the last successful Temple coach was out Golden, and uh, even the Miami tenure couldn't have gone much worse for him. Now, uh, Baylor's got a, a another highly successful Temple football coach in there, and it's uh, he, he's off to a rough start. So, uh, I mean, it's going to take if he can live up through, I don't know how long the contract you signed with him, but if he can make it past that contract, make an extension, basically get you know his own kids in there to where he's got you know a, a roster full of his guys and not you know previous uh, you know Art Bryles guys in there. Yeah, I, I think uh, Baylor they they're not lacking on talent. They still got some players on that team. I think six wins in a bowl game is you know probably their ceiling, but it, it, it's within the realm of possibility. And, you know, I think that Baylor obviously inherited, Matt Rule inherited an awful situation with the, with the, the rape accusations and the, the terrible way that Baylor handled it to the point where the, the president's gone, the athletic director's oh, gone, yeah. the coach is gone. So they're doing everything they can to remove that. And here's what Matt Rule is doing the right way. He's recruiting high school football players. Recruit them all from Texas. He has the good fortune of being in Texas. He's just doing everything he can to get as much Texas talent as he can. And he played those guys freshmen as freshmen last year. So they take their licks, and now they're sophomores. And each year they're going to get more experience. He's getting them more experience than they would have gotten if he really played the best players on the team last year. So I think he's doing it right. And he's, I think he's a pretty darn good football coach, and you can't judge him at all based on his record the first two years. The, the, the place they're starting at, no. He started looking at his record the third year. Look, look what he did last year, 1-11, uh, and 11, but he did it with all freshmen. He's playing a ton of freshmen. Came into Lawrence and won 38-9. to nine. So that shows you when you start to think, well, maybe KU – it's getting better, but how much better? They need to get way better just to beat Baylor. They need to be way better. They lost to Baylor by 29 points. And, Baylor, also, man, go ahead, go ahead. and also, to follow up your point, they damn near beat Oklahoma and gave uh, Baker Mayfield an offense fits. Baylor basketball faced way worse allegations than actual reality back in the late night, early to late mid, mid to late nineties. They were able to overcome it in due time. So will Baylor football. It takes time. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully everything does turn around for the Baylor Bears. Um, obviously, what we just discussed with all the allegations and everything that happened to that program. So hopefully we'll see. You know, Baylor improve just like the Jayhawks hopefully um, go from a one eleven one in eleven record to uh, the Baylor you can see the improvement though because you can see a plan. You can see that they're they have a plan and they're sticking to it. And uh, I don't know what the plan is for Kansas other than win now. When you're you got no shot of you have no shot of the bowl game, so that's kind of a weird plan. I, I think you'd agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to move on from Baylor. We're going to go to Texas Tech, where the Red Raiders in 2017 finished with a record of 6-7. and seven. Luke, I want to start with you. You have them finishing number 8 in the conference. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they, I mean, they, uh, they don't really play four quarters uh, all, all the time. They, uh, I, I still don't know how they had a, like, like K-State off the top. I mean, they had K-State dead in the water last year in Lubbock and somehow managed to lose that game in overtime. Uh, and then they, uh, I mean, in the, in the bowl game against South Florida, they didn't. South Florida wasn't quite the dire straits that K State was, but still was able to find a way to get that fourth quarter score. One, I believe, thirty-eight, thirty-five. So uh, I, I thought. I mean, I, I remember watching Kingsbury quarterback Texas Tech. I believe he was an A and M assistant when Manzo won the Heisman. Uh, I thought yes. he was going to do big things for uh, Texas Tech as a head coach there, and quite frankly, I don't think he has. 
they, they still don't develop a defense that's supposed to be better this year, and it was a little better last year, but they used to change coordinators every year. Uh, this is a big year for Cliff Kingsbury. I think he needs to win some games this year to keep his job. He's making $3.2 million. I would fall off with that. He is definitely on the hot seat. Not as hot seat as some other coaches, but he is definitely on that hot seat, and it could get hotter anytime soon. But, I mean, you in the best state of uh, football in recruiting-wise, uh, he recently go to Juco here and there, but you got to hit the high school recruiting as well, and he's got to win some games. Last year, he got off to a real good start. Then he ran to the brick wall. Then he uh, luckily was able to get a couple more wins to barely make it to a ball game. So it's winner now or else he's gone. He's got to get that defense a lot better to go along with that offense. Because the offense can put up points, no question about that. But it's the defense in late the late games and the closing minutes of the fourth quarter, you have to be able to close out the games either getting a key stop or getting a turnover. And that's my take on it. You figure with their system they're going to – uh, they're plugging in a new quarterback this year, and you figure with that system, and Kingsbury's very cocky when he talks about it. All I can tell you is, look, look, look what we've done in the past. You know, diff- different quarterbacks have come through, and that system has done a great job offensively, so you, you've got to believe they'll put up the points, and they stop them. Mm-hmm. We're going to move on from Texas Tech. We're going to go to Kansas State. This is actually an interesting one because, Mike, you and Luke actually have these two ranked Complete opposites. Um, Luke, I'm going to start with you. You have uh, Kansas State uh, finishing second um, in the Big 12 Conference. They finished with a record of 8-5 and five last year. Why do you have them ranked um, so high? Uh, they got a lot of good breaks in the schedule this year. They get Mississippi State at home week two. Week three is September 15th. They play the San Antonio Roadrunners. Their next week's opponent is West Virginia, and Morgantown will be their first road game. But I mentioned September 15th because West Virginia is at North Carolina State. They play a home game against a top five SCS Youngstown State in Boca Leaning Week 2. They play Week 1 in Charlotte against Tennessee. That's not going to be a 100% West Virginia team. They're going to get beat up along the way. So I like them to get the road win in Morgantown there. They uh, then go to Baylor, I believe, after that. I, I think they're just a better team than Baylor is. They get Texas and Oklahoma State back-to-back at home games. Then they have a bye week. This is what's big about the bye week. Oklahoma, on October 20th, plays at TCU. A week or two before that, they play Texas and Dallas. Texas and Oklahoma always beat the absolute tar out of each other. So even when they – they might win, but they're going to get beat up. K-State has that bye week. So even though October 27th they're at Oklahoma, they have two weeks to get ready for an Oklahoma football team that's not going to be 100%. Attention now, the following week they play at TCU. They're losing that game because of the same reason, more of attrition. TCU, after the Oklahoma game, plays Kansas. TCU is going to be – for the most, they're going to be at home, probably on paper a better team, and, and fresh for lack of a better term. You know who Rutgers, by the way, when you're talking schedule, you know who Rutgers plays the week before coming into Lawrence to play Kansas? I'm all ears. I believe it's Ohio State. That's a You're right. Advantage. You're right. Absolutely. That's, uh-huh, that's uh-huh, a little uh-huh. advantage for Thank Kansas. Thank you very much. But, yeah, then K-State goes that they're at home against Kansas. They're at home against Texas State. They're at Iowa State, which is the absolute they are, I have no idea where to put Iowa State in my rankings. Um, because they're, 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 they're Iowa State. They have such a horrible past. But it's so good last year. They have a lot coming back, but we'll get to them later. And, and then the uh, – I actually – so by my logic there, I got, I got K-State going on that. I'll be K- – K-State's my team. I just want to put that out there. I'm probably being a fanboy right now. I have them going 11-1, and but finishing second because I don't think they'd be Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. Well, you're game. definitely being a fanboy, but that's okay. You admitted it. But, but then only the championship but, because Oklahoma gets retribution of the championship. Though. I'll say one thing: they have as good an offensive tackle tandem as anybody in the country. No with, question. With Risner in in in, in uh, France from right here in Lawrence, uh, Scott France. That's a great tandem. Those are nasty football mm-hmm. players, and you want your offensive lineman to be nasty football players and physical. Yeah. Physical. See, my thing is, I don't think they can finish in the top two to get to that championship game without beating Oklahoma along the way. And I don't think they can beat Oklahoma twice, which they would have to do to win the conference. Of course they can't beat Oklahoma twice. <laughs> they can't beat them once. So, <laughs> but that doesn't mean they're not going to have a good year. <laughs> so, Mike, I actually want to ask you this, because you actually have them finishing a lot lower. You have Kansas State finishing uh, number seven. Well, um, here's why. 
they're going to get off to a good start. But it kind of reflects off the last season where they got off to a good start. Then they ran up against either, I think it was TCU or Oklahoma, I'm not for sure. And then the, uh, it was TCU first. They had TCU dead to rights. Then when the fourth quarter comes, TCU is flinging and scoring points in case they could not finish and their defense was gassed. Same thing with Oklahoma. K-State had them like 24-7 to dead to rights at home. Then once Oklahoma start figuring out and get grounded pound and get uh, Baker Mayfield going, it was a wrap for the K-State defense. Then they start their winning streak. Then they start falling back and they start winning again. So which team are we going to see? Two, I don't two know. early entries to the NFL they were hurt by two. D.J. Reed, the cornerback, mm-hmm. and I believe Pringle, the wide receiver, yes, also went to the NFL. Teams. Yeah, that's that's a tough. Uh, I'll phone to keep the transfer, transfer too. Yeah, they had some transfers as well, so they they do have some things you missing. But the thing I picked in the conference for the paper and for the I sent it to the conference office for the poll. I believe I picked K State fifth, even though they have some defections and, and guys who went to the NFL draft for a couple reasons. One, I think they have a. Two good quarterbacks who are different types, and Snyder's an offensive genius, so he'll figure out how to use them. Uh, that's one reason. Then the tackles also, but also the main reason is K State's always better on grass and dirt than on paper. On paper, you look at the names; these are not guys who have stars next to their name in high school, and, and you think that well, they're losing so much. He's not gonna, no, he knows how to get them ready to all be in sync, and that's what football is all about. Mm-hmm. Couldn't agree with him more. And that's why I picked them to finish seven because of those things. But if they get those things switched around, then they'll be up there. Well, I can see a situation where maybe the numbers three through seven teams are separated by maybe a game of piece of tiebreakers. That, that happened some years, yeah. yeah. That's a great conference to follow. It's just a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Kansas State, uh, once again, finished with 8 to 5. So, um, you guys think they can um, better that record and finish a little bit higher? But they could. Yeah, they've won back to back bowl games. I mean, it's not like they're coming up from, from scratch. They, they, they got something going on. Boy, he gets defensive when it comes to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big guy, too. I remember watch what I said. <laughs> All right, Kansas State fans. So it looks like the program's starting to maybe slide back up on the up and up a little bit more. All right, we're going to move from Kansas State. We're going to go to the Mountaineers of West Virginia, who finished with a similar record um, with the K-State Wildcats. They also finished with a record of 85 in 2017. Uh, Mike, we're going to start with you. Um, you have them finishing sixth in the Big 12 Conference. Well, uh, that got off to a good start last year, similar as K-State. But once they faced a team that had offense and defense, that's when they started getting beat up. West Virginia is known to score points offensively, but defensively, they're kind of garbage and can't stop nobody really to save their lives. That's 80% and, of the conference, though, too. I know that, but you have to <laughs> get a stout, at least a close to being a stout defense to win games that you should have won. I mean, they had TCU in a bubble, then TCU start rolling around. And I don't know... If K State did beat West Virginia last year or something like that, I think they did. But it's just like one, they're in close games. They always have to rely on the offense to bail out defensively. When is West Virginia going to uh, get a good defense like they used to? And their, hot, their coach is really on the hot seat this year. I mean, the offense is there. You just have to get a defense to go along with that offense. And I never run. have, like, the Hogerson hire, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not a bad hire, but it's, they, 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 they don't play both sides of the football. I think they're good this year. Will Greer is the best quarterback in the conference. There's a lot of turnover at that position. and This is not a typical Big 12 year for quarterback. So this could be a year that a team that has a great quarterback, Will Greer, Lefty can come in and, and threaten. I, I picked him for second in the paper because uh, largely with Will Greer. With Will Greer healthy last year, they were something like seven and two or seven and three. They'll be that much better this year. I really like this football team, and I think uh, Holgerson's not my favorite guy. I'm going to the Big Twelve Media Day next week. It's not my favorite guy to deal with, but it's going to be fun to be there. And uh, I, I really am high on this West Virginia team. Um, Luke, um, you actually just have them right, just slightly lower. You actually have them facing seventh in the conference. 
Uh, yeah, they. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier their 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 non conference schedule: Tennessee and Charlotte, uh, a very difficult FCS opponent in Youngstown State, and then uh, at North Carolina State the first three games of the year. I don't know that. I, my my suspicion is that they're going to sustain some injuries along the way in those first three games and go into conference play banged up. You know, and, and one thing I, that West Virginia has done well that I typically don't like, but they've figured it out and done it pretty well, is they recruit a lot of junior college players. Mm-hmm. And they know how to do it. And they're not just last minute getting the scraps. They follow guys from high school, I think they must do it. And they see and they really know how to evaluate junior college players. Yes, they do. I couldn't agree with them more. All right, West Virginia, so would you say that this may be uh, – not, well, not to say a sleeper, but a team to maybe look out for in this. I think so. You know, Oklahoma to me is clearly the team. Obviously, right. to everybody. Hey, last game of the year, Oklahoma. I'm thinking for second. That'd be fun. That's going to be the, the, the last right, 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 the week before the Big Twelve Championship game. So you, you should see what they, uh, they could potentially play back to back. Then, right? They could. Mm-hmm. That'd be interesting. And Mountaineers will say that they're a team definitely to look out for uh, this year in the Big Twelve. I want to move to West Virginia and talk about uh, the Iowa State Cyclones, who they also finished. Uh, we'll actually, I apologize about that. We'll actually discuss Iowa State um, and start the rest of the top 10, uh, starting with number five, after we turn with a small break right here. Stay tuned. Game of Cards kicked off. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're going to start with the Iowa State Cyclones, who uh, is the third team to also finish with 8-5 and five, uh, in 2017. We're going to start with you. Uh, you actually have Iowa State um, finishing number six in the conference. Uh, yeah, it was really impressive with Iowa State. I mean, we all know about the win at Oklahoma last year. They, uh, they, they, I believe they lost in overtime to Iowa for the Cyclone Trophy there. They have to go to Iowa City week, too. I got my uh, – definitely going to be having my – I try to catch Iowa, Iowa State every year, to be honest with you. And, not Big Twelve related. I try. I like to watch Colorado, Colorado State every chance I get to Week One. But uh, no, they uh, you know they 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 had a big win over TCU last year. That was at Ames. Um, they had K State beat before a last second touchdown ended them there. But they were uh, able to uh, uh, redeem themselves, for lack of a better term, in the uh, Liberty Bowl against Memphis at Memphis with a impressive twenty one twenty victory. Um, they bring back running back David Montgomery. Uh, some some draft pundits have him as the uh, number one NFL prospect for running back going into the season. So we'll see yeah, about that. Her. And they they're, they're one of the few teams that play on a natural grass field still, I believe. Maybe they can use it to their advantage for some home games. Uh, right, so number one in agronomy school in the country too, and so therefore they have some very very smart grass students. Not like the rest of the universities in the country where they have some very very smart students <laughs> on grass. But they really know how to manipulate the grass, and some Kansas folks believe that they iced the, the sidelines of the field in such a way, knowing what the proper shoes to wear would be, and they aren't the typical shoes you would be wearing that uh, in those circumstances. So they had the right shoes on. Kansas had the wrong shoes. On. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Half baseball is. Half of baseball is 90% mental, is what Yogi Bear said, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which means it's 45% mental. <laughs> right. But no, well, I mean, one more thing about Iowa State I want to throw in there is that uh, not, they, they, they played Kansas at home last year, but the previous game against Kansas at Ames, before Iowa State, I don't think Iowa State won, but maybe three or four games that year, and Kansas won, but maybe the one or two. It may have been a win this year. I there were 55,000 people at Jack Trice Stadium to watch Iowa State and Kansas. Oh, yeah. So they're they're they are- they are an amazing mean, fan base. When they're not, they, good, they are they the best out. fans in college football. I don't care. Who, I mean, they, I don't care if they don't win anymore than what they do. That's that. that I will. I will remember that for the rest of my life. Hey, can you imagine how they feel about Matt Campbell right now, man? Oh he, yeah. They just love, love having him there. What a great hire. Oh yeah. 
Mike, you actually have them uh, ranked a little bit higher. You have them finishing fifth in the Big Ten. Well, you can probably say I'm a little bit on the bandwagon of Iowa State because one I seen last year, uh, the first year uh, of the coach of Campbell, it, it was like a baby step. Then the second year, it just went off the roof. Nobody, including me, nobody saw them beating Oklahoma in Oklahoma. They haven't done that since 91 or 95, something like that. Then uh, on top of the uh, cake, they get back home Attention and beat TCU, another Biden good team they haven't beat in a long time. So whatever system that Campbell is preaching to these players, these players are buying into it. And they got some good recruits coming in this year, especially some four-star players. And you got a thumper like running back in Montgomery. Offensively and defensively, they can play with the best of them. They are really physical. They are smart. I mentioned the K-State game. They had Oklahoma State beat as well, and they kind of let that game away from the home, too. I think that really could have changed the tide of their season. That was after they'd already beaten Oklahoma and TCU. They said they, they just – I know there's a very controversial finish that gave them not mistake. There was a, a call or a no call that didn't go there. Yeah, I remember that. Iowa State mm-hmm. should have won that game. Or at least they lost a lot of key players from their defense, Lanning and some other guys. They've got a lot to replace this year, but he's got a nice thing going there, and the, they, the fans are totally behind You him. mentioned Greer earlier. They're one of the teams bringing the quarterback, to, uh, uh, Kyle Kemp, I believe his name is. Right. He's so back. They're there uh, on the shortest yeah. of the teams bringing, bringing talent back into position. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right, we're going to move from Iowa State and discuss the Texas Longhorns for 2017. Look them. Look them home. Most overrated team in college football. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come, on. come on. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> because he has, people are thinking because he had the third ranked recruiting class in the country, that means they're going to be way and better we both this got year. A top five. <laughs> This is college football. You don't get, your recruiting class doesn't get better right off the bat. Doesn't make you better like right off the bat. Like no, you got to have time to develop. Most of these guys won't even be playing next year. You got to develop in the weight room, and you've got to probably half of them will be red shirting. So that's crazy. Was he a good hire? Yes, he proved it with his recruiting. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here and think that Texas overnight is going to become Texas again. It's going to take a little while. I do have to beat Oklahoma. I do agree with that, uh, but why I ranked them a little high. It was like a little bit up there uh, last season. They uh, had a terrible start against Maryland, and Maryland just went in that house and walked all over them. I mean, okay. had uh, like 200 rushing yards or something like that on them. They and run it back at Maryland this year, week one. Week three, they get a USC at home. And, That's and a tough game. Then uh, they and week two they go into USC and lose that game. Then they start winning, getting a couple games here to build confidence. And I say they go a little bit off of that. They probably end up going like eight or nine wins this year. Who knows? But like he was saying, don't get caught up in the sauce for a second. We just have to pump the brakes and take ten steps backwards. Yeah, this was a team that last year. Actually made me go from this to, wait a minute, we might have a game here for a minute when they were playing Kansas. Mm-hmm. Not a real good sign for Texas. Kansas wasn't in many games. Uh, two, two games I want to highlight for Texas. I, I think they win in Dallas against Oklahoma, which I think they upset the Sooners. Um, last year, they needed home field two overtimes and an injury to Jesse Ertz to beat K-State. They have not won in Manhattan, I believe, since Vince Young was quarterback. And they go to Manhattan this year, I think they lose that game. I can see that. Yeah, Texas... I mean, uh, K State seems to have Texas number in every sport. It's, it's really a bizarre thing. Well, home teams won every game since 2012. It, that's to me. That's them having Texas number. You know, in basketball, like I remember going up to Manhattan. Uh, Swept them last Texas year. Texas was yep. number one in the country. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many years ago it was, but Texas was number one in the country. It was a Monday night, and Kansas, Kansas State beat them. The next team we're going to discuss is the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who finished ten and three last year in the Big Twelve. Mike, I'm going to start with you. Um, why do you have them ranked number three? Uh, they did lose a lot of players due to NFL draft. I get it, but I feel like they still have the same coach with the same swagger, who can coach players the way that he wants to, and all that, and get them going. Last season, they had them to an excellent start until they ran to TCU. And TCU was more physical and was able to uh, stop them. And Mason Rudolph threw a 
dummy interception to lose the game. Like, in your mind, it's like, what were you thinking? The running back was open for the check down. Throw the check down. Don't go for the win already. Just take more clock out. Then you punch him in the mouth. But other than that, they are loaded. The only thing I question about is their defense. If they can get their defense going and they uh, got most of their defense coming back and they're loaded to go with the offense who has a long way to go, they can still can compete. Uh, I like Oklahoma State to really do some damage this year, too. I got them, I got them finish number four. They have a semi-favorable schedule. They have to go to Oklahoma, uh, but they have to go to K-State as well. But they uh, they get West Virginia at home. But I think they'll beat the uh, Kansas, Baylor, and Texas Tech as well. Uh, Iowa State to get at home as well. I, I would probably pick them to lose West Virginia and Iowa State if it was, uh, you know, not Stillwater. But, I mean, home field uh, in college. Stillwater's a fun difference. place to go watch a football game. It really is. Oh, yeah. I've been there. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blast. Oklahoma State. Um, we're going to move on from there. It's going to take us to TCU. The Horn Frost finished with a record of 11 and 3 last season in the Big 12. We're going to start with you. You have them finishing third in the Big 12. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I mean, they're uh, they're, they're bringing out quite a bit. I mean, you, 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 tripping over my words here. It, it's just hard to uh, undersell Gary Patterson as the football coach there. He's uh, he's one of the defensive first guys first there. Uh, I, I don't know if they're bringing their quarterback this year, and I don't believe they are. Uh, the the A and M transfer helped me out here. Uh, uh, Hill. Yes, Hill. Uh, he's gone. He, he's gone. He, okay. he was a senior redshirt. Yeah, yeah he was th- thank you. I, I couldn't recall they bringing him back or not this year. No, but no. Uh, they, uh, they, they they get Oklahoma at home. You know, last year they uh, they played Oklahoma twice, lost both games. None of them were in Fort Worth. Uh, but uh, not conference. Uh, or semi not conference related. Week three in a night game, they get Ohio State at home. I don't expect TCU to win that game. That's going to be a real measuring stick game, though. Like, we're going to find out just how good TCU or possibly the conference is based off, not necessarily the outcome, but just, uh, you know, the, the, the 60 minutes of football. So how many yards did Kansas gain? How many total yards when that game was over? I was there. Probably less than 100 or maybe 50 yards. Care to guess, Marcus? How many total yards for Kansas against TCU last year? 41 to nothing game. I'm gonna say maybe, say maybe. Luke, I don't know. I'm just gonna throw it in there. Minus ten. Uh, let's see who's closest. Slightly closest. Marcus wins for this. <laughs> Edging both of you guys. Twenty-one total yards. Gee, that's yeah. Uh, it I should have said plus ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the game that at halftime, uh, Matt Leinart and one of the other announcers. Just threw it to the other announcer because they couldn't stop laughing. TCU, you said it, Luke. Defense first. Even some years, if they're statistically they look better, they're still a defensive program. Uh-huh. And Gary Patterson is a terrific coach. It's hard to bet against him. And he's from Lawrence, so I got preference for people. All, all, all the Sunflower State guys, I got, got a lot of love for. And uh, TCU, they got out to the hot start last year, and they have. Uh, when they got to a hot start and beat Oklahoma State, they had the top ten defense in college till they started losing to a few teams and losing Oklahoma twice. Oklahoma just ramrodded them in the regular game and the Big Twelve. So with TCU, their defense was young last year and they're coming back with that experience like, we're not going to let these teams roll on on us last year. We're going to take it. Yeah, I kind of saw the regular season game coming. I was a little disappointed in the Big 12 chat. I thought TCU was going to, I mean, they lost, what, 38-17, and it wasn't even that close. Oh, no. So I, I was kind of let down by that. But if if the mm-hmm. offense can match with the defense intensity, watch out, TCU. They could be potentially Big 12 champs. They finished top two. They got a chance. Just got to win that one Saturday. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of Oklahoma, last but not least, that is the team that we're talking about who finished 12 and 2 last year in the Big 12. And Mike, you, and Luke have them uh, finishing number one. Um, we're going to start with you. Why do you have them over the best? Uh, I'm really looking forward to week one. They played a lane train in Florida Atlantic week one. Then they played Chip Kelly week two. Week three, they're at Iowa State. Week four, they get a tricky Army team in Norman. Now, I suspect they're going to start 4-0, but don't tell me you're not interested in all four of them games in some way, oh, shape, yeah. form, or fashion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Army's interesting. 
I mean, it's amazing what Jeff Pumpkin is doing there. No, I, I think Florida Atlantic gives him two, two and a half quarters, too. Well, Lane Kiffin. A couple of guys on my list of potential coaching replacements Jeff Munkin and Lane Kiffin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oklahoma, the most interesting thing about them is that Kyler Murray was the number nine overall pick. The Oakland A's picked him with the ninth selection of the first round. Center fielder, cleanup hitter for Oklahoma, some play at Oakland Ballpark and in the Big 12 tournament. And this is a guy who could be the Heisman Trophy winner. He's Attention that good a runner. Vincent Himes, 55 in the library is closing on five minutes. And, uh, anything in front of tomorrow to the nearest The one thing I like about Oklahoma is Lincoln Riley, who took up for Bob Stoops. Is a, to me, Bob Stoops is always going to be a legend. But in my opinion, it was an upgrade because Oklahoma, ever since they got clapped against uh, Clemson a few years back when the college playoffs started, you really have seen them back there since. But when Lincoln Riley took over, they just had that swagger about them. We're just going to beat up people and just score points and all that. And that's what they had. And the second game against Ohio State, it's like this is a uh, statement game for us. Ohio State came and whipped our behinds last year. Let's go into a house and whip them. And that's exactly what they did in the second half. Baker Mayfield took over, showed up, and showed out. And the rest was history until Iowa State came into a town. And they got smacked around for four quarters and threw an ill-advised interception that lost them the game. Then they bounced back from that and just cleaned the house and went to the Big 12 until they ran into Georgia. Once the Georgia ran right and ran all over, especially in the overtime game, they was exhausted and they were they felt defeated. What well, they felt defeated, they were defeated, but their loss of edge was that. And this year, they just get a ton of recruits coming back and forth, and they're always stacked offensive and defensively. It's not hard for them to recruit players. Oklahoma has a tradition of football. Yeah, those are all Bob Stoops guys, you know, mentioned recruits. I th- to be fair, I think Bob Stoops would have had him in the playoff last year. That, that was the best Oklahoma team I'd seen since they lost to uh, Tebow's Gators, I think. It's a seamless of transitions I can remember in major college football from Bob Stoops to Lincoln Riley. I say this year uh, Lincoln Riley takes a bigger step and gets back into the Big 12 championship, possibly college playoff, and we'll go from there. Right. I, I got to win in the conference, but not making the playoffs. I just I think the Big Twelve is kind of at a disadvantage though because they they they, they, don't, they don't have the divisions they got you know they they played a round robin and there's a guaranteed rematch and I mean you, you, you think about it. you take any other conference in college football think about how hard it would be for the number one team to be the number two team twice or vice versa just food for thought I like them in the playoff game so do I in the fourteen playoff so do I. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of Game Ball College Kickoff, um, including the Big 12. Um, by the way, last season they did have seven teams in the postseason. Uh, five teams did win bowl games um, a season ago. Let's see if they can actually repeat that trend, maybe even have another team uh, into that conference. After that. Five wins in Oklahoma wasn't one of them. I think that really speaks. That's, a, that's not a knock on Oklahoma. That's a, that's a, that's a you know, compliment to the rest of the league. All right, social media, Facebook, you can follow us at Game Ball College Kickoff slash Game Ball NFL Insult. Email us, fan mail us, wherever you want to do, gck.gnflet, uh, not TV, but at gmail.com. Uh, Twitter at Game Ball Mike, you can follow me at and our official Facebook page, gck underscore gnfle. Same thing with Instagram. You can get a clothing line at tokendesignstopeka.com slash gameball. That's token designs game uh, excuse me, that's token designs to pika slash gameball for the clothing line. Like, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, my right to your left vice versa, YouTube, GCK dot TV. And what is your social media, Keegan? At Tom Keegan L J W. At Tom Keegan L J W on Twitter. Right, and of course, you can find me on Facebook under Marcus Joville ENC Jenkins. And also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Joville ENC. Find me on Facebook and Instagram at Luke Hartnett, H A R T N E T T. It's Irish. Find me on Twitter at Luke Hartnett 2 because I'm Luke Hartnett 1. That's 2. <laughs> All right, and of course, that'll do it for this edition of Game of the Goblin. Of course, we have to once again thank our special guest, Mr. Tom Thank Our you. first official special guest, no other than this man. He took the time 
to come and chat with us. He didn't have to do it, but with his kind and his hardness, he came out, support us, see what we were doing. I've been a big fan of his since day one. I admire him. And you're the my, Well, you're the bigger fan that inspired me. So he, you inspired me, inspired all of us to get in with you. Well, you, it wouldn't be possible. So thank you, Mr. Tom Keegan, for giving us an opportunity. All right. Thank you. All right. And that'll do it. We'll see you next week for Game of Cards Kick. Peace and love. Mm-hmm.